Later, Tim Colborn was joined by 11 birders at Howard Marsh, a Toledo area metro park, in search of shorebirds on a field trip with the Western Cuyahoga Audubon Society on Sunday, August 4, 2019. The weather was sunny with warm temperatures in the mid to upper 70s and light winds that helped with our comfort throughout the morning. We met at the marsh at 8 a.m. Our plan was to first walk the roads within several hundred yards of the parking area, looking into the marshes for wading birds and waterfowl. Within the first few minutes, we were observing dozens of swallows around and landing on structures. Mostly barn swallows, they were joined by a handful of tree swallows and one or two bank swallows allowing comparisons of plumage and size. A further section was busy with mature and juvenile American coots. The heavy rains and flooding from spring led to many water bird species delaying their nesting. This resulted in several species hatching their young much later in the summer than we might normally find. We observed several other families throughout the morning, including many pied-bill grebes with their cute striped-headed young and a group of common gullinels, two adults tending to three nearly full-grown chicks. While observing the coots, we saw a small, warm, brown-colored wading bird moving along the outer edge of the cattails and reeds. The diminutive size and habit of perching with its feet clutching two separate reeds suggested correctly that we were watching a least bittern. These off-secret waders had been seen regularly in the marsh over the past week or more. We discussed the possibility that these birds were being more conspicuous as they were anxious to feed in preparation of their fall journey south. After a few minutes of following the bird in and out of the edge, another of our group had located a different bird just up ahead. When we arrived, we found a third bird and, to our delight, it alighted and flew in front of us, allowing for terrific views of its beautiful plumage. As it turned out, this was just the beginning of our least bitter experience. As we moved west across the road, we noted about 25 Casparian terns resting in the marsh. This has become a reliable place to find groups of these large gull relatives, their gray and white bodies offset by a black cap and bright red-orange bill. While viewing the turns, four black-necked stilts flew into our view and landed in front of us. Adjusting our scopes, we realized that three of the birds had a distinctly brownish hue to their black backs and wings, denoting that these were also juveniles. Two pairs of stilts nested here this spring, further supporting the reputation of Howard Marsh as a true haven for water birds. They fed briefly and then alighted, flying off to another area beyond our view. The other bird of note here was a greater yellow legs that initially provided an ID challenge. We then headed back in the direction of the parking lot toward the northeast corner of the marsh. Again, we needed only to move within a couple hundred yards of the parking lot to have wonderful birding. A small mud flat had formed directly north of the easternmost section of the lot, and we added a couple shorebirds here, including semi-palmated plover and least sandpiper, showing off its diagnostic yellow legs. A discussion ensued between several of us regarding the meaning of the word semi-palmated, the word means toes that are partially webbed, not an easy field mark to see on shorebirds. As we worked our way east along the main path, we added a couple of pectoral sandpipers with their strongly patterned bibs, as well as another semi-palmated plover and a lesser yellow legs. Behind us, the marsh held reed beds that drew our attention, and sure enough, we found several more least bitterns. 
They were active here as well, and we dis observed at least two more birds taking flight across the marsh. While one or two of our group indicated they believed they had seen more, I felt confident we had seen a total of at least seven separate birds. Our last target for the day was Kingrail, another successful nester this year at Howard. We spent plenty of time looking for them, but only one of our group, who had smartly moved ahead of us earlier, was able to see them. She briefly observed three of the young moving stealthily through the tall grasses and reeds. Most of us had to be content with a quick but nice look at a Sora as our consolation prize. More than three hours into our walk, the heat had risen and several of the group began to depart. While a few of us stood vigil over the rail area, a pair of birders walking by mentioned that they had just seen two black-bellied whistling ducks around the corner from where we were. They provided a description of the sight and we proceeded post-haste to the spot. And there they were, resting in the marsh. These ducks of the southern Atlantic coast and Texas have surprisingly been seen in many northern Midwest and Northeast states this year, allowing many to add them to their life and or state lists. Four of our group made the trek and were able to see these chestnut black and white bird with their brightly colored legs and bills. On exiting the property, I encountered a young cooper's hawk lazily circling and being harassed by one or two swallows. I regretted that the group was not there to share the sighting. The total for the morning, including the whistling ducks and the cooper's hawk, was 42 species, including seven shorebirds.